Saucier, this is a video lesson on transforming a function. There's lots to be said about transformations of functions. This lesson is going to provide some specific examples of sliding or translating and then a vertical dilation, which means stretching or compressing vertical distances. And we're going to generalize how to do those types of transformations in future lessons. Some examples that will work will be using the equation or the function y is equal to the square root of x, or you could read it y equals radical x. The graph of this parent function, it's a parent function because it's the simplest form of square root function. The graph starts at the origin, contains the point 1, 1, and is this square root curve that looks approximately like that. So what do we mean by transformation or transforming? There are many ways that we can transform a function mathematically. Geometrically, we have descriptive words for them. We could translate or slide. We can slide in four directions. We can go left and right and up and down. We can go in any other direction or on an oblique direction as a combination of any of the two. So if we wanted to go up and to the right, then we could go up and to the right independently and get the combined transformation that way. We can also stretch and compress on both axes. So we can take vertical distances and we can stretch them to make them longer. We can squash them or compress them to make them shorter. Horizontally, we could do that as well. We can stretch horizontally, and we can compress horizontally. In general, we call those things that distort the shape of functions dilations. We can reflect, and we can rotate. But we're going to leave reflections and rotations for another time. If I wanted to do one of the most simplest things, move a graph to the right, or more specifically, right by 1, then we know that the graph is going to be the same shape. It's going to be the square root curve, but it's going to start one to the right and retain all of the similar properties. Same curve, but moved over. How does it change the equation? Well, the equation is going to be the parent function, but we're going to modify a piece of it. What piece? Well, x is often the horizontal variable, y is the vertical variable, and a rightward motion is horizontal. To go to the right means to slide, to slide horizontally by 1. So what do we do to the horizontal variable x? We're going to subtract 1 from x to go right. It's counterintuitive because we think, and we, when we see subtraction, we think go in the negative direction, go to the left. But in fact, subtracting means go to the right. How could we move left then? If I wanted to move left by 1, I'm going to modify the parent function. How am I going to modify it? I'm going to change or modify the horizontal variable, because moving left is also a horizontal effect. The graph of the new curve will be the same shape and have the same properties as the parent square root curve, but the entire thing will be moved to the left. How do I accomplish that mathematically? I change x. Moving to the left might be in the negative direction, but what I do to x is counterintuitively, I add 1 in this case to go left by 1. Here's another transformation. Descriptively, what do we do to move up? Graphically, what that means is taking the same curve, which starts at the origin, and moving the entire curve up raising it, how do I modify the equation? In this case, this is a vertical effect. y is the vertical variable, so to move vertically I'm going to modify y. The radical x is going to remain the same, and I will affect y if I want to go up, 
by subtraction. Again, it's counterintuitive. I'm going to subtract from the vertical variable in order to get the vertical slide of going up. Now, typically, we learn to solve for y. We're comfortable doing so. So this equation, solve for y, if it needs to be done, is radical x, then plus 1 to both sides to move the minus 1 over to the other side. We don't need to solve for y, but we're used to it. This is up 1. The last transformation that I'm going to show is just we could describe as a downward translation. How do we go down 1? And of course, what we mean by that is taking the parent curve and moving the entire function down, retaining all of the properties except where all the points have gone, go down 1. How do we modify the equation to do that? Down is a vertical effect, so we're going to modify the vertical variable y. The x part of this function isn't going to change, and we go down by addition. Again, it's counterintuitive. We think going down is going in the negative direction on the y-axis. We add to do that. And we're used to solving for y, so if we did in this case, I would subtract one from both sides to put it in a more familiar graphing form. These equations are equivalent, however. Let's talk about dilating. But one type of dilation, vertical dilation, I could describe the uh, transformation that I wish to do now as a vertical stretch. What does that mean? It means, well, we'll have to do a factor two. We can stretch by any factor we wish, but if we stretch by a factor of two, that means that vertical distances are going to double. Vertical distances are going to multiply by two to become a new distance. Visually, if we have our parent function, our parent function is going to start at the origin just as before. But this first point that I've graphed over here has a vertical distance of one. The distance between the point and the vertical and the horizontal axis is a vertical distance and that first point there has a vertical distance of one. So what does it mean to stretch by a factor of two? It means to double those vertical distances. So the new distance in this transformed function will be 2. That's twice 1. And all vertical distances will be correspondingly doubled. So the curve is going to look much sharper. Mathematically, what do we do to accomplish that? We have the parent function, y is equal to radical x. And we know this is going to be a vertical change, so I have to affect the vertical variable. That's y. How do I double distances? It's counterintuitive. I'm going to divide by 2. So to double vertical distances, I have to have the vertical variable. Again, we are used to solving for y to see it in graphing form, and if we did here, we need to multiply both sides by 2 to make the equation y is equal to 2 radical x. Last transformation, vertical compressions. Compressions are the inverse of stretching. If we want to vertically compress, in this case I'm abbreviating uh, vertical with vert, vertical compression, we need a factor, because we can compress by any factor. In this case, we're going to take a vertical compression factor 2, which means that vertical distances are going to shrink by a factor of two. They're going to have. So in a graph, the origin isn't going to change, but the first point that we have uh, graphed on the parent function at 1, 1 has a, on the parent function, a vertical distance again of 1. The distance between this point and the horizontal axis is a vertical distance, and that's a vertical distance of 1 at that point on the parent function. 
So if we're going to compress it by a factor of two, that means we're going to have that distance. It's going to shrink. And all the other points in or vertical distances in that curve are going to shrink by the same factor and the whole thing will look compressed. How do we modify the equation? The parent function is y is equal to radical x. And if you've caught on, there's always a counterintuitive idea between the description or what looks like happens on the graph and how we affect the equation. Vertical compressions is a vertical effect. So we're going to modify the vertical variable y, just as before. But if we want to compress and we think of shrinking, in order to do that, we double. We multiply y by 2 in order to compress by a factor of 2. And of course, just as before, we like to see equations solve for y. So doing so in this case, I'd have to divide both sides by 2 and I would get radical x all over 2. We can also stretch and compress horizontally, and as I said before, we can reflect, which makes um, changing the variables, uh, the sign of the variables, positive, negative, and we can rotate parent functions or any function, but rotations algebraically is much more sophisticated, so that's not something that we'll get to until pre-calculus. Uh,